All right, welcome to Hoops Tonight, presented by FanDuel here at The Volume. Happy Friday, everybody. Congrats on making it to the weekend. I woke up and I watched some NBA basketball this morning. Some real, recent NBA basketball. Warriors versus the Wizards in Japan. We have two Warriors-related videos coming out today. This morning, I'm going to do about 10 minutes or so give or take, on that preseason game and just some of the takeaways that I had from it. I had to watch that game anyway because it was a, you know, for our power rankings videos, we've been doing deep dives into offensive sets and defensive concepts and all these different things. And with everybody, I've had to use last year's footage and in some cases, I've had to go back multiple years to when guys were healthy. And so obviously with this being the Warriors at number one today, I had the fortune of being able to look at today's footage and actually look at what sets they plan on working on this season. So all of that X's and O's stuff, I'm going to save for tonight's video. Again, that usually will come out around 8 or 9 o'clock Eastern time tonight. We'll be doing a full deep dive into everything I expect from the Warriors this season. I wanted to focus on three main concepts from this preseason game. One, explaining the poor shooting because I don't think it's overly complicated. Two, looking at how good they already are on the defensive end of the floor and specifically a look at Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. And then last but not least, James Wiseman who had 20 points and nine rebounds. A great start to the preseason for him. We're going to dive into all of that. I am going to reference a bunch of plays today. As you guys know, when I do my little intro at the start of the show, I talk about how you guys should follow me on Twitter because that's where I can use NBA footage. Not allowed to use it on YouTube. Well, I cut together a few minutes of specific clips from this morning's game, and I did a voiceover over them explaining different things that stood out to me. There's some stuff with Wiseman, some stuff with uh, Moody and Kaminga, some stuff with some specific sets that they're running, and a handful of Wizards uh, items in there as well. You're going to find that on my Twitter feed at underscore Jason LT. <clears throat> You guys know the drill. Before we get started, subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel so you don't miss any more of our videos. Follow me on Twitter, as I said. And last but not least, if for whatever reason you guys miss one of these videos and you can't get over to YouTube to finish them, you can find them wherever you get your podcasts under hoops tonight. So to start, the poor shooting. So And it was more than a, like beyond atrocious. Uh, Andrew Wiggins, Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, Steph Curry, and Jordan Poole combined to go six for 35 from the field. That's just 17%. So uh, I had a, a couple of Warriors fans say like, oh, don't cover this game. It was ugly. Don't worry about it. I, I'm not stressed about shooting percentages this early on. Um, the number one thing in my experience playing basketball, the number one thing that matters with shot making is getting your legs underneath. Like it's, it's really that simple. Finishing around the rim, it's how strong are your legs as you're going through contact. Elevating when you're in catch and shoot situations after you just played really hard defense or after you just ran off of a couple of screens or you have the basketball in your hands and you're making a move and you're getting to a spot. It's all about elevating and getting good lift. If you get good lift, you have a much better chance of making your shot. During the, re- the beginning part of training camp, Every single year that I play basketball, that first month, your legs are destroyed. Why? Because they're trying to build you up and get you ready for a regular season. I've been talking with my high school kids. We've been doing our preseason workouts for the last month or so. And I've been telling them, like, now is the time to be pushing yourself. Because they start late. They don't even start tryouts until early November. Get through that wall now. So that when you're when you're uh, getting ready for tryouts, you've got your legs underneath you. But so many of these guys, I mean, it's a long season. It's a nine month season for teams that intend to contend for the championship. So there's just a lot of basketball, and they're taking on a lot on their bodies right now. And generally speaking, it can take a few weeks, sometimes even a little bit longer, to really get your legs underneath you. So I'm not the least bit surprised that they shot poorly, and I'm not concerned about it at all. Um, the defense already looks sharp. You know, LeBron has a saying uh, that he shares with his, uh, uh, you know, close circle and his teammates all the time when they're talking about, you know, partying or things like that. He always says, keep the main thing, the main thing. Like, no matter what we're doing, we can have fun. We can have these side ventures. We can do all these things. But no matter what, the main thing is the main thing. And for LeBron, he's just referring to basketball. But for the Warriors, that's defense. Like, we always think of the Warriors as a fluid offense, a team that runs things the right way. It plays a very, you know, player movement, um, you know, body movement type of offense. But the reality is, is defense has always been their main thing. Last year, they were 16th in offense and they were second in defense. And the defense looks really good 
already. So I wanted to do a deep dive from the film, and I've got some clips from this, like I said, that's in my Twitter feed that you guys can find at underscore Jason LT. But right now, they've got to replace the Gary Payton the second minutes and the Otto Porter Jr. minutes. My guess is Dante DiVincenzo will fill one of those roles. He looked okay today. Uh, uh, he's coming back from an injury, so it'll take a while for him to really get back to what he was. But one of those roles they're going to need to get filled by either Moses Moody or Jonathan Kaminga. I think that's a big part of why they didn't pay Gary Payton. I think that's a big part of why they let Otto Porter go. It's simply put, these are those guys, these are the future. These guys are the guys they've invested draft picks in. These are the guys that they've invested their future in. They need one of these guys to blossom. And right now, it's kind of like a little bit of a toss-up because they both have completely different strengths right now. I think I think Golden State trusts Moses Moody way more offensively right now to play within their system, just taking the right shots, furthering the advantage, attacking closeouts, making the right play. I think they view Q, uh, Jonathan Kaminga as a head defensively, and I think that that stands out on tape. Moses Moody's a little bit top-heavy, big wide shoulders, not super quick right now, but he does have some strengths. And so I think they're, they're tr- I think their hope is that Moses Moody kind of figures things out defensively because I think he makes the most sense fitting with them. Uh, my feel, my what I put in my notes is Moody's trial by fire because my feel from what I saw in today's preseason game, they put him out there and guess who they had him guard right away? Bradley Beal. It was like, look, man, we need you to be able to defend quick players, big players, every archetype of player in a playoff series. Let's see what you got. Let's start right now, it's literally in September, and let's see if we can have you ready by April. And, you know, it was funny. On the first couple of possessions he was guarding Bradley Beal, he uh, got beat off of the dribble. Uh, there was one where he was kind of chasing over the top, and it was a dribble handoff. And as Bradley Beal just kind of stopped and looked at the rim for a second. Moody lunged kind of to his left side, and, and Bradley got some uh, downhill uh, penetration. And then there was a, a second dribble drive where he got some penetration. After that, he held his own a little bit better. Again, He's never going to be quick enough to just stay with those guys sliding his feet if he's going to apply ball pressure. Every defender needs to find out what their individual strengths are. Moses Moody has long arms. And so the big thing that's going to take an adjustment for him this season is understanding that it's okay for him to give a little bit of ground because he's got long arms to make up on the contest. And so from that standpoint, it's going to be it's going to be good for them to continue with that trial by fire. Throw him on bad, on difficult matchups as much as possible during the regular season, especially quicker players, because I think he'll actually do okay against stronger players, and lean into that for 82 games. Let him take his lump. He's going to be barbecued several times, and that's okay. But you've got to lean into that because they need to be him to be that guy that they can play in the playoffs this year. Um, I thought Jonathan uh, Jonathan Kaminga looked great defensively. He, uh, um, gosh, what's the 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 shooter uh, that that plays for Washington? I'm blanking on it right now. Um, Corey Kispert. So he was guarding Corey Kispert and just giving him a nightmare time chasing him over the top of screens. And like that was the number one thing that stood out to me on tape from Jonathan Kaminga uh, this morning is just how good he is already at j- uh, chasing over the top of ball screens and off of dribble handoffs and off-ball screens and things along those lines. That's not easy as a big guy. I've said this a lot on the show. The the, the type of body type that performs best in, in chasing over ball screens and off-ball screens and things along those lines are usually short, stubby guys with low centers of gravity that are difficult to knock off their spot, and they blow up screens just by being physical running through. And you, uh, uh, Kaminga's doing a really nice job of taking lung, lunging steps over the top and giving a little bit of separation, which is natural, but then recovering with his athleticism, you could tell he was in Corey Kispert's head. There were t- uh, two plays in particular where he was curling off of uh, of dribble handoffs, and on both of them, he kind of pump faked on the jump shot because he was scared Kaminga was coming, worked further down the lane, and on one play, he forced a turnover, and on the other, he kind of like smothered him on a pull-up jump shot that he ended up airballing. He's ahead defensively right now, but once again, it's the same stuff with Jonathan Kaminga on offense. He overpenetrates too much, and then he gets into the thick of things, and then he tries to force passes, but people are hanging on your arms and stuff, and it just results in turnovers or difficult things along those lines. Right now, he just needs to kind of understand. I, I think I think right now on the offensive end, he's got further to go than Moody has to go on the defensive end, so I think he'll be the one that ends up uh, being the guy that they'd really try to cultivate more. But, I mean, he's he's still a tantalizing prospect. I just think he has further to go. 
A couple minutes on James Wiseman, um, the good stuff. His length around the rim gives Golden State a dynamic that they really haven't had. He's already using verticality really well. He snuffed out several attempts around the rim, which is good because most young bigs foul too much. That's kind of like a predictable thing for, for young bigs. And for him to kind of figure out that like, hey, I have freakishly long arms. I'm seven feet tall. Let me just stand there with my arms up and these dudes are already going to have enough trouble trying to finish over the top of me. Um, he's playing with a lot more physicality defensively. Offensively, he's got a long way to go with physicality. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But like on the defensive end, I, I noticed him uh, embracing the contact aspects of defense a little bit better. There was a play where Bradley Beal was driving to the left. I think it was right before the end of the first quarter. And I'll have this play in my in my video uh, breakdown as well that you'll find on my Twitter feed. But Daniel Gafford is 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 ducking in under the rim and, and shoving James Wiseman under the rim, which is a typical attempt uh, to, by offensive players to clear out the paint so that their player can elevate up and finish. And to James Wiseman's credit, he just kind of shoved Gafford in the back and pushed him off of him and then went and met Bradley Beal at the rim and blocked him. And and I was like, wow, like, there you go. He's embracing the physicality a little bit more. Again, like, physicality goes both ways. Generally speaking with officiating, if one dude is inflicting his physicality on you, you are allowed to meet that with equal and opposite force. That's why I always get on LeBron fans who complain about him not getting enough foul calls. I mean, the dude plays bully ball. The refs are basically ex uh, are, are explaining their whistle with a trade-off. Like, LeBron's going to be bully. We're going to let these guys hit him back. And that's basically how it goes. And that's the thing. Like, if you see a guy trying to meet you with physicality um, on the offensive end or on the defensive end, hit him right back. Basketball's a contact sport. Go for it. Um, his hands around the rim on offense were really impressive. There were two plays in particular, a Jonathan Kaminga drive on the left baseline, and then a play where Draymond kind of got a dead ball on the right wing where he picked up his dribble and he was kind of caught with nowhere to go where uh, Draymond just kind of threw a lob pass over the top and Wiseman like pinned a guy down, caught it and then finished with a left-handed hook. There was another one, like I said, the Kaminga one where he kind of shoveled a difficult pass in traffic in the lane and Kaminga caught it and drew a foul. His hands are good around the rim and that's going to be really good with this particular team. The one thing I want to see him work specifically on is being more physical with his jump hook. We talked about this a lot in our summer league breakdowns of of Kaminga, but if you remember or of uh, Wiseman, but if you remember, I, I talked about how on jump hooks you want to initiate contact first and go towards the rim. And if you fade away, it's one thing if you're fading away when you don't have a physical advantage, but when you're fading away when you have the physical advantage, you're just making a shot more difficult than it needs to be. There was a play mid second quarter where he caught the ball right around right around the charge circle or a little bit further out, maybe like six, seven feet. And he had a shorter defender on him. And instead of turning with physicality for his left-handed hook, he kind of turned out away from the basket and made it like a dramatic fading hook, and he missed it. I'd just like him to see be have him initiate contact before he does that. Um, one last thing. So there was a pick-and-roll play uh, where Steph and James Wiseman ran pick-and-roll from the, the top of the key out of their five-out set, which we're going to talk about more in our uh, um, power rankings video. But he gets a dunk, a lob dunk from Steph. B classic pick and roll, ball screen, Steph comes off, guard chases over the top, big uh, steps over to corral Steph. Steph just throws a hook, lob pass up above the rim. Wiseman gets it and dunks it. On the very next possession, Kyle they ran the exact same play, and Kyle Kuzma had to tag out of the weak side corner to stop that lob to Wiseman, and they ended up getting a wide open three for Draymond Green, although he missed it. Those are the kinds of dynamics with vertical spacing with Wiseman that's going to add a, an interesting dynamic to their um, to their offense. They, there were some sloppy turnovers. There was a play where Steph cut back door and James Wiseman uh, threw a bad pass when he wasn't open and threw it out of bounds. There was a pick and pop with Steph and Wiseman out of their a five out where Steph tried to throw a looping pass back to Wiseman, pop into the three-point line, and it got deflected and turned over. There, so a little bit of sloppiness there with the Steph Wiseman dynamic. That was there two years ago too. They just need more reps. They just these guys need lots and lots of reps to get used to each other and their different play styles because the, the the kind of stuff they're going to be running with those two is very different than what they've been doing in general with Golden State over the years. But yeah, so uh, don't freak out about the poor shooting. That's normal at this point in training camp. Defense looks good. That's great. James Wiseman looked awesome. That's great. Uh, Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga have a difficult season ahead of them, but I think that they're targeting Moody as the guy. And then all the footage of the things that I'm talking about will be on my Twitter feed. You can check that out there. And then don't forget, we have our power rankings video later today. As always, I appreciate your guys' support, and we'll see you guys later.